G'day legends, welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast. Going to go through our rapid review for round four, brought to you by Grilled. And today is actually Mad Bun Day. Of course, the public holiday has thrown us into a little bit of a spin here. But make sure you sign up using the link in the description to the Grilled loyalty program called Relish. And Mad Bun Day will apply to you each and every Monday if your NRL team wins over the week. And I believe it's the same for AFL as well. But if your NRL team wins over Over the weekend, you can go into Grilled on a Monday with your voucher that they'll send your email or text to you, and you can get a two-for-one burger on a Monday. So South Sydney fans out there, you would have got your first taste of Mad Bunday. I know that Matty the Waterboy absolutely murdered one earlier today. A lot of you guys out there that are South Sydney fans getting your first taste, which is unreal. Penrith Panthers, you guys, you're collecting a heap of burgers in no shock to anyone. So make sure you sign up using the link in the description to Mad Bunday with grilled honestly some of the better burgers i've ever had me and cat got stuck into some the other day cat gets her first burger as well south sydney fan how good we got stuck into some the other day and they were unreal so make sure you use the link in the description and shout out to grilled for partnering with us here at the rugby league guru for our rapid review each week now as you may have guessed we're actually recording this before the west tigers and the Parramatta eels game so we'll cover that in depth tomorrow on bloke in a bar but this review will be for the first seven games our rapid review before we do go more in depth tomorrow on bloke so let's sit back and take in everything that occurred over the weekend our very first game kicked off on thursday night the penrith panthers winning that one 22 points to 16 our beat our bad even bet this week was penrith to win and both teams under 20 that one really hurt but the nathan clearyless and james fisher harrisless penrith panthers took on the sydney roosters here as outsiders and look we tipped on friday that we thought on thursday sorry that the penrith fans would win this one simply because they are the best defensive team in the competition competition and honestly they conceded one try in the first half which was off a kick which I also didn't think was a try uh so the Penrith Panthers just showing what they're all about Daniel Tupu scored in the very last minute of the game uh once again we were always so focused on attack and you know super coach points and stats and all this sort of shit the best defensive team will tend to miss will tend to win most games and the Penrith Panthers they have done it again here I thought Dylan Edwards had a really good game uh the swap for Taruva and Brian Toto swapping edges has proven to be a fruitful one fruitful one for Taruva scoring three tries here I think he scored two last week so he is stacking up a heap of tries very very quickly Taruva going to be interesting to see uh where he lands over the next few few years obviously the Penrith Panthers They've resigned Isaac Tungo. They've resigned Taylor May. Uh, Dylan Edwards isn't going anywhere fast. So uh, they've got a lot of young backs coming through, the McLean boys and whatnot. So it will be interesting to see Taruva. There'll be a lot of clubs that will offer him big money deals. There might even be clubs that might view him uh, as a fullback as well. So very interesting to see if the Penrith Panthers are able to keep him. But I thought he was tremendous in this game. I thought Brad Schneider who came in for Nathan Clear. I thought he was very, very good. Had a very impressive game. I think stats-wise, he only finished with... Um, well, he finished with hardly any stats, actually. I thought that he could have quite easily picked up a, you know, a try assist here or there. I thought he was really good, uh, Brad Schneider. Very impressive in his first game for the Penny Panthers. Jerome Luai, strong as always. Isaac Tungo got through his work, as he usually does. Uh, 109 metres, 13 hit-ups. Probably quiet by his standards. Thought he was solid, though. Brian Tyo only ran for 155 run meters. Once again, you look at the kick return meters, only 19. They don't want to kick him the football. Uh, still got through plenty. Uh, Mosley Otter, obviously a very good game. Whilst James Fish Harris out, he had to step up and he certainly did so. Maverick Guy made his debut, which was great to see. Shout out to Maverick. Unreal scenes there watching uh, MG, watch his young bloke run out onto the field. And I believe they said in commentary, it was 40 years to, to the day since uh, his uncle Brandy, uh, Greg Alexander, made his debut, of course. Uh, Mark Guy, I believe, married to the sister of uh, Greg Alexander. So an all Penrith affair there. Liam Henry, strong off the bench once again. 29 tackles, only missed the one. Isaiah Yo just went about his work as he always does. Uh, he's putting together one hell of a season, Isaiah Yo, and I know it's the same as the other years and whatnot because uh, he's just so goddamn consistent. He's almost so consistent that we don't appreciate how good he is. Uh, but week after week, he just keeps putting his best foot forward. 184 run meters, Isaiah Yo, 30 odd tackles. Uh, very, very impressive performance. 35 tackles, Isaiah Yo, very good. Uh, look, the Penrith Panthers. Not a heap to touch on, just more of the same. This is what they do week in, week out. They are incredibly consistent. Uh, they did that with a heap of guys missing. Uh, obviously, Scotty Sorensen missing from that side as well. So 
very, very impressive. They lost Liam Martin during that game too. So, I mean, <laughs> like when you consider the amount of guys they've got out going up against the Roosters side, who's been pretty impressive this year, to be fair. Uh, not much more the Penny Panthers could have done. So, full credit to them. Uh, we move to the Sydney Roosters. Uh, and look... <sighs> I don't know. It's almost hard to judge teams how they go against the Penrith Panthers. You get a real gauge of where they're at as far as their season and whatnot. Uh, and you look at the Panther, uh, the Roosters, realistically, Tedesco, Tupu, Suwali, Manu, Dom Young, Kiri, Walker, JWH, Brandon Smith, Terrell May, Nat Butcher, Tilly Tupanua, Victor Radley. Outside of Lindsay Collins, that is just about the best 13 that this team could have run out run out against. Against At home as well, keep in mind. Against the Panthers side that, as we said, we just ran off the list of players they're missing, including arguably the best front row forward in rugby league and arguably the best player in rugby league. Uh, pretty impressive what the Panthers did there. Pretty disappointing from the Roosters. I know they were missing players, uh, and they did get a couple of harsh referee decisions against them as well. Uh, that no try with the obstruction with Dylan Edwards. I, um, I thought Matty Johns made a really good point on his show the other night. He said, fuck I'll tell you what, I feel sorry for the bunker uh, because, you know, they are told by the NRL just to referee it by the letter of the law. They're told to follow it black and white. Um, and then you get these decisions that they make off black and white and we all hate it and we blame them for it when realistically it is the NRL telling them to referee like this. So I do feel a little bit sorry for them. I'm not sure what the NRL has come out and said. I wouldn't be shocked if Graham, uh, Graham Annesley came out and said he thought that one should have been a try, which personally I think is very, very harsh on the bunker because they're just doing what they're told. Uh, we don't agree with it, but... It's what they're told. They're told to referee black and white, no grey areas, and that was definitely a grey area for me. Uh, eyeballing it, it's a try for me every day of the week, but uh, by the letter of the law, I understand where they're coming from. Uh, yeah, look, a very disappointing performance by the Roosters there. Uh, they would have been expecting a lot more. I think Terrell May deserves a shout for what he did. 19 hit-ups, 150 metres, 71 post-contact. He made 38 tackles and missed none of them and had two offloads. He is an absolute maniac, Terrell May and the Roosters need to lock him up because if they don't, someone's going to pay him big money and I wonder if he used this game as a little audition to the Penrith Panthers. He wants to play with his brother, Taylor May. He re-signed the other day. Keep an eye on this situation because if the Penrith Panthers can move it around somehow to find a way to get Terrell May into their side, not only will it be the best front row forward rotation in rugby league, it might be up there with the best ever. It'll start to compete with the Broncos of the early 2000s and whatnot because he's an absolute maniac. No one's been able to get on top of Mosley Otter and Fisher Harris for a long time. Your Liam Henrys, your these sort of guys that are coming through. The Panthers, they are in a very, very good spot at the moment. So a little situation to watch there. But look, not much else to touch on with the Sydney Roosters. Uh, you come up against this side, you know what you're going to get, and they certainly got it. Uh, for the South Sydney Rabbitohs, Friday afternoon, obviously good Friday. Uh, South Sydney 20 over the Canterbury Bulldogs 16. Um, look, not the most high-quality game in the world, but I enjoyed this one. Two pretty evenly matched sides at the moment, two teams that were desperate for wins in this one. Um, look, I thought South Sydney... It's an improved performance, uh, but how many other teams do they beat on Good Friday with that performance? I'm not too sure, to be completely honest with you. I'm confident they wouldn't have been a top eight side with the performance that they put in the other day, but you can only play who's against you. South Sydney are in a rut, and look, all they had to do was just get the monkey off the back and find a way to win, and they did here. Once again, it was not pretty, uh, but they just had to find a way to win, and sometimes when you're in trouble like South Sydney are, just getting a W on the board, just getting a win, getting a bit of confidence into the side, regardless of how ugly it is, regardless of how poor the performance is, sometimes it can do absolute wonders. So we'll see the impact it has on the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Uh, but look, I thought that Cam Murray, in no shock to anyone, I thought he was great. Uh, the idea of playing him anywhere other than 13 has blown my mind consistently. He obviously set up the first try there, putting Tommy Burgess over. I think it was the uh, the cast patrol. Credit to them. One of them tipped Tommy Burgess for the first try score, which is unfucking believable. I think he's got a bit of a habit against Canterbury scoring first tries. Uh, so a great ball there from Cam Murray to put his front row forward over. Very, very good. Uh, good to see Keon Colomantangi returning to the edge. He should be, but why it took two weeks to do that and why? He's now got a new halfback inside him. I feel a little bit sorry for him. Um, Hawkins, look... I said it before, I'm not convinced he is the answer. Uh, in fact, I just flat out don't think he is the answer. But I, I'm also not convinced that Elias is the answer. So I understand what the coach is doing, looking for new combinations and whatnot. But I personally think Elias will be back in this side. 
very soon. I think South Sydney, I think they've got two tough games coming their way. Then they've got a bye. I wouldn't be surprised to see Elias back after the bye. He's talented Hawkins. There's no doubt about it. But I just, I'm not quite convinced that he's ready to take over a side like this that is struggling at the moment. Uh, so I think Elias will be back reasonably soon. Uh, Cam Murray was unreal. As I said, Talis Duncan, another 30 minutes. I don't really understand why he's playing such limited minutes and why... It isn't at least just getting upped every week. Uh, that's a little bit disappointing. Damien Cook, he obviously got, got uh, played off the bench last week when Havili came into the side to start. I thought he bounced back with a huge game here, Damien Cook. He was very good. Ran for 90-odd metres. Uh, had a couple of tackle breaks. Then he had two offloads. Made 48 tackles. Only missed the two, which you love to see from Cookie. A really good bounce back from a champion of our game. I uh, thought Tavita Totola up front was very solid as well. Uh, didn't get a heap of metres, but I thought he was tough through the middle. Uh, uh, defensively, pretty solid as well. As far as the back line goes, uh, Jack Whiten was tremendous. Uh, that's the one silver lining coming out of this game for South Sydney outside of the win. Jack Whiten, two tries, 140 run metres, two line breaks, four tackle breaks. He was everywhere. Jack, very, very solid. Uh, Tass, good as well. Without blowing it away, he was solid. Alex Johnson, uh, looks like he's going to miss up to six weeks with this uh, hamstring injury, so that's devastating for South Sydney. Interesting to see... What the coach does now, does he bring in Richie Kennard? Does he bring back Jacob Gagai? Is Ty Munro ready to come straight back in? I'll tell you what, if Ty Munro lands on the left wing, uh, that could be very interesting over the next few weeks. Uh, obviously, their strong side. We know that AJ scored a heap of tries down that edge. Uh, if you do manage to get a Ty Munro on that side... Pretty scary. Uh, obviously, AJ is getting older. It's taken a long time for him to start to get some injuries. Uh, but this is the first one he's had for quite a while from memory. So hopefully he does still have plenty enough time to chase down that Kenny Irvine record. I think he will. Uh, but this is something that a lot of players face at the back ends of their career. We've seen Billy Soda and whatnot go through similar things. Uh, so an interesting little watch, AJ. Um, you know, and it's not like he's just chasing down any try scoring record. It's the greatest of all time. So it is going to be an interesting watch, but I'm still well and truly backing AJ to get there. I don't think he's scored a try so far this year. I could be wrong, but I don't think he scored one yet this year. So, uh, yeah, when he gets back, we'll have to get a little bit of a wriggle on. Sorry, he has scored one try. He scored in round one over there in Vegas. Uh, but, yeah, look, South Sydney... It wasn't fantastic. It wasn't pretty, uh, but they found a way to get a W and sometimes that's all that you need to do. They're going to be a very, very keen watch for me over the next few weeks to see if it has turned around because uh, at the moment, I'm not quite sure if it has. Um, look, I thought that Jack White was probably lucky, away to, lucky to get away with a hip drop. Uh, once again, maybe I don't have the perfect understanding of what a hip drop is, but I mean, it looked pretty black and white to me. Uh, Latrell Mitchell getting a spine for that play on Josh Adekar. I just, I don't understand what people want the trail to do in that moment. It's a body contact sport. Sometimes there's going to be body contact. Uh, I personally think if Josh Adekar gets up, they slap each other up, they laugh at halftime and they walk off, we never fucking talk about it again. I think because Josh, Josh Adekar got injured, I think then we had a really closer look at it. And once again, I'm not quite sure what more you wanted Latrell Mitchell to do in that moment. Um, I think that he does become a target at times for people just to go at him and have a crack at him for anything they possibly can. And I personally think this is another example of it. Um, so... Yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Um, I posted a thing on my story the other day, which then got taken down because uh, NRL on nine deleted their post that they put up about Latrell Mitchell. But I stand by what I said. It's a body contact sport. Sometimes this sort of stuff is going to ha happen when you have body contact in a heated moment like that. I'm personally okay with it. We want to wish Josh Adokardi all the best, obviously. But I'm okay with it. That's going to happen in rugby league sometimes. That's the brutality of our sport and it's the beauty of our sport as well that guys are going to put everything on the line in a split second. Sometimes collisions like that are going to occur. Uh, for the Canterbury Bulldogs... Josh Adokar obviously came into this side with Blake Wilson ruled out, only last until halftime, so that did make things pretty difficult for them. Um, you had Jacob Preston, who also got injured, who looks like he's going to miss about four weeks of footy, so my guess would be that you'll see young Katoga come into that side. They could miss, move Josh Curran out there, but also uh, Curtis Morin got suspended as well, so... I, I mean, if you're going to move Josh Curran to the edge, who the fuck's going to play through the middle? I don't think they can afford to do it. So I think you will see uh, the young fella come in on the bench who Cat always calls a nice guy. So keen to watch him. Looked very good in the trials. Thought Reid Marnie was solid in this game. Thought he, he was really strong. Um, Stephen Crichton, very good as well. 150-odd uh, run meters, three line break assists, had the one try assist, was very, very good critter. Connor Tracy just keeps coming in and doing the damn things. Played on both wings. Not quite sure... 
why we swapped him from one wing to the other. I had a few question marks around that from Seraldo. Uh, but, you know, you've just got to make do with what you've got when you've got injuries and everything. Maxi King was fantastic. Had a line break at one point, 150 odd metres. He was very good. Liam Knight, I, I I just, I respectfully to Liam Knight, I wouldn't be picking him in first grade. Uh, but I think it just shows how much they're having trouble with their middle forwards. Zane Tedavano. In reserve grade still, I believe, maybe an experienced head like him they might have to turn to this week coming. We'll see how that plays out. Sam Hughes as well. Uh, you're only playing him for 15 minutes. You're just not getting enough out of these guys for me. Uh, they really need to find some middles, and they need to find them damn quickly because uh, the guys that they've got, they are surviving and hanging in games off pure grit, but they need to find some middles. They need to find someone to fill that role because Josh Curran, he's getting through a lot uh, and they're asking a lot of him and he'll keep responding, but my God, it's going to take a toll on his body. He needs someone to help to help him and Max King. Um, look, Canterbury, I think you take a lot of positives out of this. You definitely hung in this game. Canterbury's improving week on week. They were in it towards the back end. Um, you know, when you consider in the first 13 minutes, they were down 12 nil and South Sydney looked like they were running downhill. To keep themselves in this game, oh, I thought it was pretty impressive. So I know it sucks for Canterbury fans. You're not winning games and you were hoping that you would be this year. But positives are that you're hanging in games. You, you're resilient. Fuck, you're resilient. Um, and you, you just keep on having in-game injuries and sin bins. And that's the other thing too. Curtis Moran got sin bin in the 50th minute. I mean, that 10 minutes of defense was really good. South Sydney didn't score another point after that. You know, we've done, we've run, run the numbers before, you know, Teams do concede points in that 10-minute period, but you tend to see teams also concede points after that 10-minute period. Considering you'd already lost Josh Adokar um, and it wasn't long until the back row was injured as well, a lot of resiliency shown by the Canterbury Bulldogs just to hang in this game. Um, I think they take a lot of positives from it. There's a lot of improvement to happen, but I mean, even if you were Canterbury's harshest critic, I don't think you could possibly say they aren't improving, they aren't heading in the right direction. So positives to take from it for Canterbury. I thought Matty Burton was solid again. That first try they scored through him, very, very impressive footy. Um, you take positives from a Canterbury, you move on to the next. Uh, the Broncos, 38 points to 12 over the North Queensland Cowboys. Queensland Derby here. Um, I didn't see this one coming. One, I thought the Cowboys would win. Two, I thought if the Cowboys lost, it'd be a tight affair. Brisbane absolutely blew them away. That's without Payne Haas. Adam Reynolds obviously back in the game, and it really was his right foot that decided this game. Uh, when you see one of the best kicking games in rugby league execute their role to almost perfection, it is just light and day between bad kicking games, average kicking games, good kicking games, and Adam fucking Reynolds. He is just tremendous. And, you know, going up against Scotty Drinkwater, one of the better fullbacks in our competition, he just absolutely toyed with him. Absolutely toyed with him. Some of the plays he came up with Adam Reynolds, some of the kicks he came up with, and the range of different kicks that we saw, um, just tremendous. Obviously, the heavens opened up just before this game, very wet, and Adam Reynolds just licked his lips and went, good as gold. This is my sort of game. And Jesus Christ, didn't he enjoy himself? Made it a very, very tough evening for Scott Drinkwater. Adam Reynolds, he was sensational. Even the moment there, you could see Scotty Drinkwater was so rattled. At one point, he was just staring at Adam Reynolds too, too wide of the ruck, waiting to see where he's going to kick it. And Ezra Mam saw him. Eyes all over Adam Reynolds just went sweet. I know where the space will be. Kick for himself and scored uh, pretty wild. Corey Oates scored late. Great to see him back in the side. What about the cheer that Corey Oates got when he ran onto the field? Uh, for a winger coming off the bench to play the last 15 minutes in the back row, incredible stuff. Just shows how popular he is up there. Uh, Katoni Sags, I thought he was really strong. Took a number of very big hit-ups. I thought coming back off kickoffs, he was tremendous. That's the sort of hunger we want to see from Katoni. I haven't looked at his stats. But I would assume in this game he had more than his eight or nine hit-ups that he usually does. 12 hit-ups. How good? 12 hit-ups, 117 run meters from Katoni. That's the sort of shit that we need from Katoni. Two tackle breaks. That's all we want. 12 hit-ups every single week, and he will have an impact every single week, and he certainly did in this game. Selwyn Cobbo, I said it in the Supercoach review. He ran for 179 meters. He had about five errors. I think of those five errors, four of them were when he was in the process of scoring a try or about to score a try. He was very good in this game, Selwyn. He just got unlucky in a number of moments. Uh, him at center is going to be a successful move. I have no doubt about it. Honestly, if you go back and watch the game of Selwyn Cobbo, he got unlucky in so many moments, run down by Tommy Dearden, uh, scored another try with a great kick chase at one point that was ruled a knock on. A few things went against him. He was very unlucky, Selwyn. I felt very sorry for him. And if you are a super coach player, ignore his score of 24. He was almost worth 100 in this game. He was tremendous. Um, Tristan Saylor came in, did a good job. 
Um, Fletcher Baker, the best performer, the best game that he's had for the Brisbane Broncos so far. He was really good. Corey Johnson went about his work. Jordan Rickey, very solid as well. Uh, Jaden Hunt, he was good on the edge. I, I still stand by what I've always said. I think he's a middle forward. I don't think he's an edge. While Pierre Cure is out, I get it. But I think he's much better through the middle. Uh, obviously, I'm not up there every day at uh, Red Hill watching performances and watching training and whatnot. So, Kevy probably knows more than me. But my eyeball of him is that he's always been a middle forward, not an edge. But he's doing a good job there. Willison came on. He was good. Uh, 10 runs for about 100-odd metres. Got through some defensive work as well. Missed a couple of tackles, to be fair. Uh, and Paddy Carrigan, uh, he was the best on ground once again. I think he got the Car Webb medal there. Uh, just a tremendous compliment to him. Uh, I said during the week, you know... You could take all these guys out of this side, all the Jenga players, but I reckon Paddy Carrigan might be the most important one. He backs it up with a man of the match import, man of the match performance. Uh, 207 run meters off 20 runs of the football, 80 post contact, two tackle breaks, made 41 tackles, only missed the three. Uh, came up with a with a key offload as well. So very impressive performance by Paddy Carrigan. Uh, this is why I think he's one of the best forwards in our game. Uh, let's have a look at the North Queensland Cowboys. Uh, oh, geez. When you have a look at their back line, you have a look at the errors. Drinky made five. Felt make one. Val Holmes made three. Zach Labart made one. Murray Tuolungi made three. If you look at handling errors, Drinkwater five. Felt two. That's seven. Val Holmes three. That's 10. Zach Labart one. That's 11. And Murray Tuolungi had four handling errors. Between their back five, that's 15 errors. That is simply unacceptable. And I think it was the super coach Spy who posted the other night. Have we ever seen a back five make more errors? I probably doubt it. 15 errors between your back five is unbelievable. When you consider the Broncos made less than 15 errors and they've got fucking Selwyn Cobbo, who was very unlucky down for five himself, that is just disgraceful. They need to get that sorted. In the wet, I get it, but I'll give you the hot tip. The Broncos played in the wet as well. Very disappointing performance by the Cowboys. I'm not sure who they play next week, but I'm expecting a huge bounce back next week. You can see Toddy Payton was filthy. It's a Queensland derby. The Cowboys should be up for that one. They certainly weren't. They were very disappointing. Uh, I thought that Ruben Cotter did everything he possibly could got through a lot of work did a lot there 40 tackles uh 10 odd hit ups um jason tamalolo played decent minutes this week got out 50 minutes was good without being fantastic did have a couple of hit ups though that you sort of went oh okay is the old tamalolo back reese robson solid once again had a good game he's having a very very good season robson uh the talk of the town though tommy did and what a tackle. Uh, had no right to be there, let alone have no right to make that tackle. Uh, that's why he's going to be a Queensland, a fantastic Queensland player. I almost died of the hiccups there. A fantastic Queensland player for quite some time. This is why he scares the shit out of me. Um, as much as... James Maloney wasn't known for his defensive attitude and whatnot, I just think... He is just walking in with confidence this year, Tommy Deaton. And for me, it just screams it's got something to do with James Maloney up there. I think he's been a great buyer for them. And I think you'll only see Tommy Deaton go from strength to strength. And I think that uh, James Maloney's having a say in that. <laughs> I think he's playing a role for sure. Uh, you think about the guys he'd be in contact with up there, Jonathan Thurston, James Maloney. Pedigree couldn't get much better than that. So Tommy Deaton having a fantastic season. Um, outside of that, look, I thought uh, Griffin Neem, he's had a great season so far, but geez, he had some handling errors in this one. I think he had two or three and key drops as well that he just hasn't been making in the first few weeks. Sam McIntyre came off the bench, probably wasn't as good as his previous weeks, missed a couple of key tackles, but these guys, they're getting used to first grade. Um, it was a tough game for the Cowboys. They were on the back foot the entire time. I'm going to, I'm not going to go too harsh on them, but it was disappointing from those two. Um, outside of that, not much to talk about with the North Queensland Cowboys. A disappointing performance. I'm tipping them for a big bounce back next week. Once again, not sure who they play next week. Just going to have a little squiz at that if my internet doesn't shit itself, which it's taking its sweet ass time, which is always good. Uh, they play. The Titans, oh my God, the Titans at home next week. Fuck, that could get ugly. Uh, Cowboys could put on a real score there, unfortunately. So one to watch there. Uh, oh God, that makes me nervous for the Titans. Um, okay, let's get to the next game. The Dragons, 20 points to 12 over the Manly Seagulls. Another one that I did not see coming. I thought Manly would win this one. The Dragons at $3. They stand and deliver and credit to them. Um, really good performance by the Dragons. Uh, obviously, Manly, they started pretty fast. You had uh, the first try there scored by Cole early. What an offload by Tommy Turbo. Very impressive. Um, and you straight away thought, oh, here we go. More of the same from the Dragons. But they bounce back. Tries to Jack Bird, Sloan, Jaden Sua and Sloan once again. 
I thought Jack Bird obviously scored the first try for the home side, but I thought he was very solid, good in contact as per usual. Jacob Little got through his fair whack of defensive work. Sloan's the one for me, though. Uh, once again, only 85 run metres. The stats... They don't tell the story from Tyrell Sloan and they and they don't unless he has a huge performance. But I thought he was good in this. I thought he was solid. He did what he had to do. Lomax, 22 runs once again. He's just making a habit out of this. And they're not they're not easy runs. They're fucking tough carries. And he's just doing it week in, week out. Um, very, very impressive, Zach Lomax. Not sure what's going to happen with the future of Lomax. Obviously, uh, Flano's come out and he's been pretty open. He's not going to trade Lomax unless he gets like a top pedigree player. So it'll be interesting to see what teams throw up. But, geez, if, if you're a team with good forward depth, like Parramatta, and you can maybe give away a top shelf forward to maybe get Lomax, I seriously consider it. Uh, there's a number of clubs that could really do with Lomax. The Roosters, they could give a top shelf player to maybe get Lomax. Not that they need him, but maybe just looking to into the future might be handy to have. Uh, very interesting to see where Lomax lands. The Canberra Raiders, They've got so much depth in their forward pack, it's not even fucking funny. They they, they they could trade a guy there to get a real strike back in Lomax. Not that they probably need him at the moment, but plenty of options there. Uh, I thought Kyle Flanagan was solid once again. Benny Hunt, very good as well. Um, I thought the Dragons middles, though, they, they were the guys that impressed me. Blake Laurie and um, Francis Molo, they started well, but it was the guys that came off the bench. Jack DeBellum was huge through the middle. He was very impressive. Tommy Eisenhuth, mate, what a season he's having. Coming off the bench. He only ended up playing 46 minutes, Eisenhuth. 13 runs, 132 metres, 55 post contact. He had five tackle breaks. I think he had a line break in there as well, which I don't think they've credited him on uh, NRL stats, but I would have given him a line break. He was very, very impressive, Tommy Eisenhuth, and becoming a very important part of Coach Flanagan's team here. I picked him up in Supercoach Draft on the weekend. Was very happy with that. I'll be looking at him in Classic as well. Luciano Leilua, he was good. Uh, Jaden Sewer has, a, has had a real resurgence this year, which is fantastic to see. Uh, look, Dragons are doing well. They've been up and down. They've been inconsistent, but they've shown what they can do in the first week and in this game, they've shown what they can do. And even against the Cowboys, despite getting smashed off the park in the first 20, 30 minutes, they show that they're capable of playing good footy. And once again, if it wasn't for a key error or two, maybe that game could have played out differently. You know, when the Cowboys get momentum, it's just shut the gate. It's over. Look, another week, you watch the Dragons again and you probably come away with more questions than answers, but they've shown they can be a good footy side, so we'll just have to keep an eye on them. The Manly Seagulls are disappointing. Uh, Tommy Turbo, as I said, he opened the game and he looked like he was going to go a million. After that, he just looked so rattled. He looked like he was just in his own head. Five handling errors. You just never see that from Tommy Turbo. So, And we know Manly, you know, when they're flying, Tommy Turbo's killing it. When Tommy Turbo's killing it, they're flying. He had a poor game and they really didn't have uh, all that more to go to. Um, I guess the one positive you take out of it for Manly is the Dragons are on the front foot. Manly didn't play well. They did only concede 20 points. They only got beat by eight. They didn't get blown out at home against the Dragons. So I guess a positive to take from that. Cola. Good performance, obviously scored that try, 140-odd run metres. Um, I thought DCE was solid, had a few balls that hit the ground and whatnot, but eh. Luke Brooks, um, you know, as a 5'8", when you're on the back foot, you're going to have these games where you are a little bit quieter than previously. Still broke some tackles and whatnot. Uh, got bumped a fair few times in defence uh, that, that sort of led to those five missed tackles that he's got there. Uh, but, yeah, look, he's had a good start to the season, Brooks. You were not going to go too heavy on him. I thought Paseca was fantastic, 27-odd odd tackles, 19 runs, 100. 186 run meters. He was very solid. Olukawatu was very good. Uh, obviously scored a try. Forced a repeat set at one point and was just damaging all day. Really picked out Luke Brooks. Uh, sorry, really picked out the opposition half and really gave it to him. Um, Olukawatu, 103 post-contact meters. 103. That's pretty damn impressive. 205 run meters. Uh, Burbo. I thought he started the game really well. He was really involved. He was really keen. Coach took him off after 50 minutes. This is becoming my concern with Burbo from a super coach point of view, uh, that he is sort of not playing, that he's not up to playing those huge minutes at the point, at the moment. He's had a lot of injuries over the last few years and whatnot, so I think it's going to take Burbo time to walk it, warm into it. Uh, 
But, you know, Corey Waddell's coming off the bench and he is doing a couple of nice things. Waddell scored a nice try last week. Didn't really have any huge dramas with him on the weekend either. So an interesting little watch there with those two. But Burbo's just got so much upside. Uh, Jake Travojevic just went about his work as he always does. Just another Jake Travojevic knock. Um, you probably don't. I think he's one of those guys that once again, when you take him out of the scene, out of the side, you'll notice him straight away. Um, number of missed tackles for the uh, Manly Seagulls. Sort of everyone in double digits plus. Outside of Jackson Borlo on the wing, everyone else missed a fair whack of tackles. So plenty to work on there for the Manly Seagulls. Uh, but, yeah, I'm not sure who they play next week. The Seagulls, they're an interesting watch at the moment. Look, Anthony Seabold, he has a bit of a history of starting fast and then falling off. I hope that's not happening to the Seagulls here, but they looked amazing the first two weeks, including Vegas and whatnot. Now, I don't know, are the wheels starting to fall off a little bit? We'll see. Next week, they play... The Penrith Panthers, holy, that could get ugly. Panthers at $1.60 at the moment with Neds. Decent value there. Don't mind that because I don't see Manly beating that side. But we'll see. Hopefully I'm proven wrong. Uh, the other guy I thought was good that came off the bench, uh, and I think he's been a nice little grab for this side. Uh, I know he had a couple of errors and whatnot, but Nathan Brown, I think he's worth having in this team. Um, okay, let's move to... The next game, which is the late game on Saturday night, the Dolphins and the Titans. Uh, I was at the pub watching this game. Didn't have audio on, so probably didn't have the greatest view of this one. Uh, but look, I was really impressed with the Titans at the start. I sort of thought, okay, Titans are back. This will be the bounce back. They're home. Uh, Maxi Plath then got Simbin. I thought, okay, this is their game now. And still, they just managed to find a way to lose it, which is the most disappointing thing. Uh, my boy Jermaine Joliffe was good. I think he's going to have a big few months while Tino's out. Scored the first try, which was great. He was our smoky as an anytime try scorer for this game at $8, and he got the first try. We love that. Uh, Philip Sami, I thought that he almost got snapped in half at one point. I, th I thought he'd be out for multiple months, to be honest with you. He managed to be back straight into it. Scored two tries. A shout-out to Phil Sammy. thought AJ Brimson was good. Uh, I'd be moving him into the 5-8 role. Falls at seven. That'd be the play for me. It's dire straits now. They need to do something because they can't keep doing this. Uh, big silver lining was, of course, Dave Fafita came into this game. Only played about 55 minutes. Where is he? Yeah, 55 minutes on the nose. 12 runs, 120 metres, 55 post-contact. Had a line break assist in there. Uh, was very, very solid for feeder. I would be bringing him into this side straight away. I'd be starting him next week. Uh, might not have all the match fitness, but I think he's just got to find it the hard way because uh, simply his team needs it. Without Tino, they need him out there. Uh, look, outside of that, it's just disappointing what we're seeing from the Titans. I really thought that we would see a Desi Hasler brand of football very quickly and uh, we're just not seeing it is the reality of it. So... <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Happy to give the Titans a few more weeks. <sighs> that North Queensland Cowboys matchup next week, that is, that's got real potential to break the hearts of the Titans here. In saying that, it's a game no one will be expecting them to compete in if they can, if Desi can find a way to get them up for that. Um, maybe that can be the one that turns the season around, but uh, dire straits at the moment for the Titans. I'm very nervous about them. For the Finn, Obviously, Maxi Plath, 10 in the bin. He got suspended. He's going to miss a few weeks. Ray Stone will come back in to the 13. Uh, a lot of positives. Probably a game they should have lost considering the start, the sim bin, all that sort of stuff. Uh, Hamiso was the star of the show once again. Scored a try. Two line breaks, two line break assists, uh, two try assists and four tackle breaks. He was fantastic, Hamiso. Jermaine Asako just keeps doing the damn thing. Five from five goals. Uh, Ren for 200 metres. Uh, he's not getting a heap, as much ball as what he probably should have there. But every time he gets the pill, he's just making it count. Another just Wayne Bennett master stroke. Jermaine Asako. Avarillo solid. Herbie though, he was fantastic in this one. Obviously scored the try, but 156 run metres, 56 in post contact. Very, very good Herbie Farmworth. Going to be a great signing. Jack Bostock, two tries, which is great. Uh, but I don't know, watching it live, it felt like Jack Bostock had to score a try, dropped the ball, and there was sort of no in between. Um, three handling errors he had. He's got to get that sorted. You cannot be making that many, stakes, that many mistakes in the NRL. If you are, good teams will or will punish you. Uh, Titans, probably not one of those sides at the moment, but it's it's fantastic for Jack to score two tries, and he was very good in those moments, but he's got to make sure that all the stuff in, in between is right. Still ran for 142 metres, which was good. It's just those errors we've got to get sorted. I thought Isaiah Katal was really good. I thought he handled this game very well. He led the team around well. Um, you know, I don't think he came up with any huge attacking stats, but I just thought his ball movement was nice. Picked up a couple of guys on the inside to get them on the front foot, get them momentum, pull, pull the right reins at the right moments. Starting to come of age, Jose Cato. I was very impressed. Jesse Bromwich was great. 
Uh, had that pass that obviously put – was it Tommy Flegler over? No, who did he put over for that try? Josh Kerr it was, sorry. Great little ball playing, a lot of experience in that moment. Uh, getting older, Jesse Bromwich, but still playing great footy. And I'll tell you what, I assume this will be his last season. They're going to miss him so much next season. He's going to leave a massive hole for that Dolphin side, losing him and Bennett. A lot of experience. Uh, Tommy Flegler continues with his form. I thought Ewan Aiken was great. Uh, Josh Kerr coming off the bench, very good. 134 run metres, scored the try as well. Very impressive. Uh, Maxi Plath, obviously at 13. I really like the kid. I think he's got a huge future. He's going to send a few weeks on the sideline now. I knew he'd done the wrong thing. He wore it straight away, got sin binned. Uh, a forgettable night for him, but I still think he's got a big future, and I do think the 13 jersey is where he belongs. Uh, Titans, 30 points to 14 over the Titans. <laughs> Dolphins, 30 points to 14 over the Titans. Sorry. Dolphins, very impressive. Um, you know, it's crazy to think where they started in week one and the change that Wayne Bennett has put in this side. They look so bad in week one. It was not even funny. Wayne Bennett's obviously put a rocket up and I've heard a few stories and whatnot, um, and it's definitely working for them. Despite injuries and dropping key guys and whatnot, the Dolphins, they're doing very, very good things at the moment. Not so much for the Titans. We'll see how that game goes next week against the North Queensland Cowboys. All right, let's move to... Sunday afternoon footy, the New Zealand Warriors 20 points to 12 over the Newcastle Knights. Uh, Jackson Ford's a guy I want to talk about. Scored the first try. Just the amount of work he got through. I've been saying it for a long time, and even when he was at the Dragons, I said the same thing. There's a rep footballer in this kid, Jackson Ford. Just needs an opportunity. He needs to sort out errors in his game. And when he doesn't make errors, these are the sort of stat sheets you're looking at. He scored a try. 14 runs for 139 run metres, 46 post contact, had a line break in there, had four tackle breaks, um, and he made 34 tackles. Very impressive from Jackson Ford, a very, very good game. Still missed a few tackles here and there, but the thing that I love to see is that he just didn't have any errors, which over the last few weeks, he's just had too many. When he doesn't make errors, he can be a proper star, Jackson Ford. Mitchie Barnett was fantastic as well. I think he could be a genuine origin smoky. I wouldn't be surprised to see him land on the bench for the New South Wales Blues. People laugh at that, and I've already seen some people laughing at the take on social media, but if you open your eyes and watch the way that he plays his footy, he'd be very handy for the New South Wales Blues. He's got a bit of see you next Tuesday in him as well, which I absolutely love and what you need in origin. Mitchie Barnett doing good things. AFB wasn't his biggest game. Did what he had to do in a quiet game to run for 140 metres, 55 post contact. You'll take that. Lukey Metcalf injured. You fucking hate to see it. A kid that's just had so many obstacles in front of him. He finally gets his opportunity, shows what he can do. That injury strikes him down. Uh, you could tell, obviously, very distressed after the game. I've heard that uh, he could be out for a few weeks. And with uh, when you consider how competitive the halves are at the Warriors, uh, with Tamare Martin, with Chanel harris Tavita. You don't want to give anyone a sniff at your jersey. And unfortunately, Luke Metcalf, through injury, he might in this game. Rocco Berry, solid. He's developing into a very, very good footballer. Uh, Roger Tuvasa-Shek, he was dynamic in this game. 283 run metres, seven tackle breaks. He was very, very impressive, Roger Tuvasa-Shek. The big question is, will they move him back to fullback? I am not quite sure. Personally, I don't think they will. I think he will go to centre. I think that Chance and Cockstead still jumps in at fullback and does a good job there. I don't think they're going to move him. That's just my take on it. Uh, Dallin Matenis lesniak 198 run metres and 198 tough run metres. Marcelo Montoya, very good as well, 156 run metres. Had a question during the week about Marcelo Montoya. A few people sort of getting stuck into him. They can do better than him. Man, I reckon he's a solid footballer. I reckon he's worth having in your side. Um, hard to handle. Teams do not like going up against Marcelo Montoya. He's a very good trainer from what I hear, and they absolutely love him at the club. So... Bit harsh on him, I think. Kirk Cable was solid as well. Uh, Marazine Corre, get, good to see him back in the side. Didn't play huge minutes, but had good impact. And Chanel Harris Tavita, obviously played more minutes than what he thought. Scored a nice try in this game. I'm expecting him to probably play 5 8 for the next few weeks. And I'll tell you what, he's going to play it at a high click because he's a very, very talented player, Chanel Harris Tavita. Let's move to the Newcastle Knights side of thing. Also, Wade Egan, a very good game. Um, just those niggling injuries in game really worries me about Wade Egan. You've always got to carry a utility. You can't afford to not have a utility on the bench. But fuck, he can play Wade Egan. <laughs> God, he's a good player and just so important to this side. Let's have a look at the Newcastle Knights. Um, Kalen Ponga. His team gave him very few good opportunities. They put him in very few good spots with good ball. And he just does it all himself. 170 run meters. 
36 post contact, but he had two line breaks, two line break assists, one try assist, seven tackle breaks, scored 100 plus in Supercoach without scoring a try. He was just electric KP. And when the Knights do sort themselves out and they do start to put themselves into good spots in good shape with good ball, KP is going to absolutely light this competition up. When that happens, though, I'm not too sure because they do look a while away from that, to be honest with you. I thought Tuala was very good, obviously uh, replacing Greg Marshu at the moment, who they're really missing. But he stepped up and did a good job. 22 runs, 228 run metres, 60 post contact, a few tackle breaks, very good Tuala. Bradman Best was solid again. Jack Hogger, look, I'll be honest, he wasn't overly impressive. His kicking game was pretty poor. Uh, Jackson's been going very good in reserve grade, as you saw last week. I think they lost this week, but still a good performance. Um, yeah, I don't know what the answer is. I thought Jack Cogger... I mean, Tyson Gamble obviously set up this try for uh, Tyson Frizzell, but I don't know. As a whole, he's not setting the world alight either. I'm starting to wonder if maybe Cogger Hastings is the way they should go. Uh, it's probably unfair on Gamble, but it's more unfair on Jackson Hastings out of everyone. So I don't know what to do, Newcastle. I don't know what they're going to do there. and I'm not sure how they're going to play it out, but we'll see what happens. Uh, Kai Pierce paul in the second row, he was fantastic. Uh, 106 run meters, but tough 106 run meters. 59 post contacts, so more than half of that in post contact. You love to see it. Uh, three tackle breaks. He had an offload in there as well. His first of the season. It's a couple of times they turned him under the grain, which I thought he looked fantastic coming back against the grain of the line there. There was one that he found, Tyson Gamble. Nice ball playing. So much upside, man. So much upside in Kai Pierce Paul. He's going to have a huge season. Tyson Rizel, outside of KP, probably the best on the park for Newcastle. I thought. Uh, stat sheet wasn't amazing. Did score the try. Only ran for 100 metres, but some of the defensive plays he came up with, very, very impressive. Adam Elliott, 60-odd minutes. Um, I'll tell you what, between Elliott and the Saifides, I want more out of them and I expect more out of them because they are all fantastic footballers. They're just not doing as well as I thought they would. You look at the Saifides. Combined, Jacob and his brother, Daniel, they combined for 160, 160 run metres. They played 90 minutes of footy. This is two New South Wales starting front row forwards in this Newcastle night side, missing Leo Thompson. And in 90 minutes of footy, they run for 160 metres. We need more out of the Saifides. And I, well, I said it in the Roo Crew in my notes from this morning. I feel like a dick always asking for more, but surely we can get more out of these boys. And I say it because they're so talented, but we do want more out of them. Um, outside of that, not a heap. I thought Jack Hetherington was pretty good coming off the bench as well. Probably looked like the most damaging out of all the front rowers uh, who, you know, he's been so inconsistent for a very long time, uh, Jack Hetherington. But compared to the Saifides, I thought he looked really good. Um, disappointing by the Newcastle Knights. They needed to get a win and they hung in the contest long enough to give themselves a shot. Uh, I thought KP came up with a second tackle kick late in the game that was really disappointing off the back of a good game that KP had had. Uh, but the Warriors, they were the better team. They are the better team at the moment and deserve this win. All right, last game of the week. As you know, uh, we're going to cover the Parramatta game and the West Tigers game. That one hasn't kicked off yet. We'll cover that a little bit later in the week. Uh, but the Sharkies, 36 over the Canberra Raiders, 22. Ah, uh, look, mate, <laughs> we're 23 minutes into this game and the Raiders are leading 18-0 and you're thinking, oh, my God, the Raiders by how many? The Sharks have fallen into a heap. 30th minute ticks over. Braden Trindle finally cracks them open, scores a great little individual try, and then it was all the Sharkies after that. Uh, they were very impressive from that point on. I thought Trindle and Hines were good in this game. Uh, I thought my boy, Kale Itero, obviously scored a try. He probably shouldn't have, to be fair. I'm pretty sure it was a knock-on, but we got away with it and we'll take it. Very impressive. I've been saying it for a long time. I think that he has to be in this side. And a lot of people say to me, oh, well, he hasn't been in first grade for this long. There must be a reason for it. Are you sure? Same thing I said about Luke Metcalf for a long time. Yeah, I'm sure. He's a good footballer. He just needs an opportunity. He needs someone to back him. Hopefully, this move of Talakai to the forwards is a permanent one. And Idaro gets to stay in this side because he's a genuine star in this competition. I said it for a while. He looks like Val Holmes. He plays like Val Holmes. And he reminds me a lot of um, a 2016 Val Holmes that burst onto the scene and really lit it up for the Sharkies. So I hope that they keep him there. I think he has got a huge future. Uh, the two wingers were good. Molotalo and Cartello came with some really nice plays. Molotalo obviously crossing uh, for two. Uh, Cartello scoring one, but their run meters, 117 run each. Very good meters there. Raymond was good as well. Sort of the only back one guy I haven't spoken about there, but 163 run meters. He was solid. Got to give credit to Nico Hines. His team's down in the dumps. He had 20 runs of the football for 152 run meters. Only came up with attacking stats on the last play, but you can never, ever question Nico's effort. What about his goal kicking as well? 
hitting them from all over the place. I wasn't convinced last year he was going to hold on to the goal kicking long term, but very impressive in this one. I love as well that he saluted to the crowd after his last conversion. One of the good guys in our game, Nico, very impressive. Cam McInnes played the entire 80 minutes. 20 runs, 150 run meters. How many tackles did he make? 48, only one missed. When when Cam McInnes gets the opportunity to play big minutes, fuck, he's impressive. I'll be honest with you, I think he's looking just a yard slower than he has in previous years, but you can't question his effort, and this is why I keep saying if he was a Queenslander, he would have played 10 Origins already or more. Um, I'd love to see Madge pick him. I think it would be – I think it would send a fantastic message. Guys like him, uh, Mitchie Barnett – Geez, attitude-wise, I think they'd be great gets for the New South Wales Blues this year. We'll see how close they get. Um, outside of that, for the Sharkies, Tommy Hazelden, he's got some ability. Defensively, though, laterally, he just moves so slowly, and I think it is something that you'll see good teams address uh, that they will go at him, but he is very talented. Sivitalikai in the back row. Wasn't fantastic. Um, only had the 36 run meters off seven runs. Um, missed a fair whack of tackles too. No, only had the one missed tackle. I thought he missed more than that in the game. I did think he got caught out of position on a couple of occasions though. So Britt Nicker are returning soon. They've got the bye next week. Then Britain returns. So interesting to see what the Sharkies do with their side. Whether they keep Sifra in the forward rotation. Whether they move Ito out of the side, keep him there. I'd be really tempted to keep Ito there. But Sifra was almost the form center in this competition. 10 days ago. So I don't know what he's going to do here. Very interesting. I think that whether you keep Hero or you move Talakai there, I think it's a good move either way. I think there's positives to both, but I'm super keen to see what they end up doing there. Uh, yeah, look, the Sharkies started shit, had to dig themselves out of a hole, and they certainly did dig themselves out of it. I thought Blake Braley was very good as well. Uh, let's move to the Canberra Raiders, who started this game incredibly well which sort of only makes you more disappointed when you look up and after that point, they lost the game 36 points to four and absolute fucking drumming when you take out the first 20 minutes. And just to let a lead like that go, especially when you're the Canberra Raiders and you pride yourself on completing high, you know, completing your sets and kicking to corners. When you're up, when you get an 18 nil start and there's only 60 to go, you should absolutely shit him when that's what you pride yourself on. And I understand why Ricky Stewart was filthy post game. I think he will make some changes to this team. Um, I think a couple of his forwards let him down in certain moments moments with handling errors and whatnot. Uh, let's have a look, though. I thought Schiller was very good. Obviously scored a, scored two tries, sorry. 108 metres off 10 runs. He was very solid. Um, Matty Timoko, he was good as well. I know that Ricky Stewart didn't want to give him much praise post-game, which I think is just how Ricky Stewart goes about his work with his coaching. Uh, he keeps guys on their toes, and he expects you to deliver every single fucking weekend. Xavier Savage scored the first try and I thought, oh my God, he's going to have a huge game. And then unfortunately for the first time in 2024, we saw Savage from last year who was very disappointing. Uh, a lot of drop balls, uh, a lot of just shit errors in, in really poor moments. Very disappointing from Savage. I thought he'd turn the corner and it's only one game and honestly, it's only about a 40 minute period where we saw the old Savage. I think Ricky Stewart, he'll give him a serious stern talking to. Uh, I don't think he'll drop him, but I think he'll get a stern talking to and get a proper warning from Ricky Stewart and it'll be interesting to see how he bounced back because up until now, he's been fantastic, Savage. I'm not going to go too heavy on him, uh, but he needs to learn from that game and not fall into those old habits. Uh, Ethan Strange did what he had to do in this game. Uh, wasn't really the sort of game for Ethan Strange. Uh, 22 tackles, only one miss. You'll take that. Fogarty, very similar. Um, the forward pack... I thought Joe Tarpanay was good. He did have an error or two at the start of the game, but I thought he was solid throughout. Morgan Smith has only played the 56 minutes. I think they need him there playing big minutes. Uh, I was a bit surprised when he came off and stayed off for as long as he did. I think they simply need him out there. Horsburgh jumped into that 13 role. Um, just going to have a look at his stats, but I felt like Horsburgh made a number of errors in this game. Uh, what do you have? Two handling errors. It just can't really have that. 31 tackles, so he was solid uh, with the ball in hand. Only had the 67 run meters. I think they play Horsburgh as an out-and-out -out front row and they leave Smithies in the 13 roll uh, to play 60, 65 minutes. That's how I'd be doing it. That's kind of what I'm expecting um, from Coach Ricky Stewart. Hosking obviously started this game. with Whitehead out, got, got a HIA during this game. I think he'll be out next week. Not sure if Whitehead's available. Maybe they move Horsbury to the edge next week. They've got plenty of options there. We'll see what they do. Simi Sasagi's been going good in New South Wales Cup as well. So plenty of options. Uh, keen to see which direction he goes in there. Danny Levi scored another try. I don't know how he keeps doing it. Feels to me like he runs at all the wrong moments, Danny Levi, but he keeps on producing points like this. So credit to him. Uh, but yeah, look, the Raiders, very disappointing as a team uh, to lead 18 nil when once again, you're a team that prides yourself on just completing high, kicking to corners uh, when you had 50% possession. Completion rate was 75%. I mean, 
not awful. When you're leading 18-0 and you complete at 75%, you probably should win those games of football. Sharkies weren't perfect either. They completed at 79%. Uh, just having a look through some of the stats, if they tell the story, offloads about even. Uh, where are their errors for this game? Errors, 12 to 11. The Sharkies actually made more errors. Um, 27 missed tackles for the Raiders. Sharkies made 23. So, yeah, I think... Uh, I think that's what's going to frustrate uh, Ricky Stewart and the Raiders the most. They're up 18-0. They're a side that prides themselves out of strangling teams out of contest. And they just let the Sharks run downhill, which is very disappointing. Penalties conceded three apiece. I oh, mean, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, very disappointing for the Raiders, but credit to the Sharkies. I think the Sharks can take a lot out of that last 50 minutes or so that that's the sort of footy side that they are. you got to remember defensively as well, very good for the back end, but the first 18 minutes, pretty average. So, uh, yeah, look, weird game of footy for the Raiders, uh, but I think that Ricky will put a real rocket up in this week. I'm not sure who they play next week, but I would not want to go up against the Raiders. They've got the Eels. Back there in Canberra. That'll be a cracker. Really looking forward to that one. That's the 6.15 game next Sunday. Guys, that will do our rapid review for round four. Brought to you by Grilled. Make sure you sign up to the link in the description. Uh, Mad Monday is obviously today, but next week it will be back next Monday. So sign up there and uh, go in and grab your two fine burgers if your footy team wins this weekend coming. Shout out to Grilled for sponsoring the Rapid Review. As I said, guys, we've still got the Parramatta and the West Tigers game from round four to come this weekend, kicking off in about an hour or so. Don't know why I looked at my wrist then. Don't have a watch on. Not my best work. Uh, but we'll have our review of that on Bloke and a Bar this week, our deep review, and we'll talk about it a bit more during the week. If you want to join the Roo Crew, guys, the link is in the description. Hit it there. you got early access to just about everything we do here at Rugby League Guru. Some things we only put the audio up on the podcast you'll have the video in the root crew as well extra content uh first access to merch as well and there might be something coming for magic round so stay tuned for that but a heap in the root crew go and join the rugby league guru community there in patreon you can find the link below you can find it in my instagram description whatever it might be there is already the super coach review from round four already up in the root crew you won't get that on the podcast until tomorrow and it's the only place you can get the video for that as well so if you like the video content Go and check out the Roo Crew and absolutely stack in there with early access. We will see you over the next few days on the Rugby League Guru Podcast.